Welcome back to GSI. What an opening month of February it was for Missouri Western softball. A 14-3 record, ranked 15th in the nation, and the Griffs are getting it done in all facets of the game, especially from the circle. Yeah. At about that same time, Shane Simpson and Jack Long were getting off of football practice. Riding together, they decided to take a different route home. It was the summer of 2009. Shane Feist was playing the best golf of his life. He was the Griffins' number one golfer and had just won the North Dakota State Amateur Competition. Then his life would change. It was that final arrest in 2005 where his grandfather finally delivered an ultimatum that would turn it all around. Welcome back. It's role play time where we basically pretend to be relevant national figures in the relevant national Because we're not scene. relevant figures locally. No, so. not at all. Ryan Minley with a GSI investigative exclusive here. Today we're talking about uh, no hitters and baseball superstitions. We all know that it's not okay to talk about a no hitter when a no hitter's in progress, but what about tweeting about a no hitter when a no hitter's in progress? Our video vlog continues from San Angelo, Texas, site of the NCAA Division II Softball South Central Regional Tournament. Say that a million times fast. Of course, it's Missouri Western's sixth tournament appearance in school history. It's sixth in the last eight years. Griffin's lost record-setting kicker Brad Beckwith to graduation, but the replacement, not too shabby. No, he's only a preseason All-American. Senior Greg Zerline joins the Griffs this season. He's a transfer from the University of Nebraska, Omaha. A handful of Western athletes continue to do their part in the community. Santa Claus had some help this holiday season. His helpers wore black and gold. Cassie Webb has a skillful golf swing. I'm attempting to wrap a tool set. Her gift wrapping skills, however, aren't quite up to par. Oh, they're actually really awful. <laughs> but the intentions are awesome. Ah, that's all right. That's a good one. Every holiday season, members of Missouri Western Student Athlete Advisory Committee put aside their sports to play Santa. This is a toy dog for a little eight-year-old girl. And we got a list of everything that the kids wanted in the family, and so then we just went to Walmart and went shopping, and then came back here, and now we're wrapping. It's called Griff's Giving Gifts, part of the Adopt-A-Family program. It begins with Thanksgiving, where the athletes shop for and hand-deliver Thanksgiving dinners to needy families. The scenario is the same for Christmas, but it's also different. Very emotionally touching, just seeing the people that you're actually giving into, and just the situations that they're in. And you don't know why or how, but just to actually be able to help them. Shirley Walker's situation is a struggle. She raises seven grandchildren by herself. I like to see my grandkids happy. Thanks to adopt a family. Hi. Can we put them on your tree for you? They get a visit from Santa's helpers in the form of Griffin softball players. Nice to be able to see where the gifts that we got were going. And to actually see the kids' reactions and the family's reactions and how thankful they were. I think it's some jelly worms. Jelly worms, huh? You know the old saying, it's better to give than receive. Oh, a picture. Well, in exchange for giving Shirley's family a Christmas to remember. Not the whole family, but half of my family. Aww. Santa's student sports helpers receive a family portrait and plenty of hugs. <laughs> Here, giving and receiving are on a pretty even playing field. I think it's a dream. I mean, it's a blessing, a great blessing. For Griffin Sports Insider, I'm Ryan Minley. Are there more? Or is, or is this... Shane Feist never asked to be Western's top golfer. He just is. He's just that good. He's really playing well. I feel great. But nowadays, even the bad days of golf are still good days. It's just a game. I mean, you'd like to do your best, but, you know, there's a lot worse things that could be going on. Feist has already won a fight no 21-year-old should ever have to fight. It was the uh, hardest thing I've ever had to do. It was the summer of 2009. Shane Feist was playing the best golf of his life. He was the Griffins' number one golfer and had just won the North Dakota State Amateur Competition. Then his life would change. A couple weeks after I got home for the summer, I, I found a lump. Um, and I didn't think much of it. And I kind of looked it up online and um, you're like, there's no way, no way this is happening. Shane Feist was never told he had testicular cancer. He didn't have to hear the words. We all kind of assumed and, and, and knew what we were looking at. Um, my, you know, my parents didn't, 
but I did, and my doctor did, you know, and um, I remember my mom came home from work um, after I saw the, my, the first doctor appointment. She came home from work, and, uh, and I had to tell her, and uh, she called my dad, because I couldn't even call him. Within three days, he was at the Mayo Clinic. The cancer was caught early. The prognosis was good. Feist was given an 85% chance of survival. He took last year off from school to stay home in North Dakota, where he underwent two surgeries and four rounds of chemotherapy. And then after each cycle, you just kept getting more tired and tired and tired. Shane Feist never asked, why me? I didn't let myself think about that because anytime I would think about what if this, what if I don't make it, or why did this happen to me? I felt like it was just going to hurt my chances of making it because it made me weaker. So I didn't, I didn't allow myself to think about that. The only thing I allowed myself to think about was beating it. A year later, things are back to normal. Feist is back to his old form on the course, finishing in the top five of two events this fall. He says he wants to be an All-American this spring. Last year, Shane Feist didn't know if he'd be in this position. Now that he's back, he'll approach golf and life the same way he approached the fight he's already won. Try to stay positive, you know, um, lean on your family, you know, try to, uh, try not to think about the, what the end result could be, but think about what you want it to be. Hello and welcome to GSI. Brett Easley has the day off. Lots to talk about this week, but we begin with an inspirational story out of Western. Two Griffin football players save the life of a young boy and earn fans for life. It's one of those off-the-field stories that make on-the-field exploits seem a little less important. Oh, Liam, look who's here. Oh, super sweaty. Yeah, I do not care. <laughs> it was an emotional reunion, especially for two sets of strangers who only briefly met one week earlier. But a chance meeting with Jack Long and Shane Simpson is one that Teresa Gall will never forget. They saved his life. That life in question, Liam Snook, Gall's 17-month-old grandson. A week before, on a hot August day Almost. after a day of babysitting, Teresa was loading up the car to take Liam home. Put him in his car seat, threw my keys up to the front seat, hugged my sister goodbye and realized that my car door was locked. I, the, all four doors were locked. It took less than two minutes for the heat to take effect. I just couldn't get to him. He was so red and crying and vomiting profusely. And my sister ran inside to get help. My niece went inside to get me a hammer because I wasn't going to wait. I started to beat on the door and she helped me. We had to take turns because our arms hurt so bad. And he just got started getting sicker and sicker and I was panicked. He started trying to go to sleep and I'm beating on this door with a hammer and I'm just, I said, oh please God, send somebody to help me. At about that same time, Shane Simpson and Jack Long were getting off of football practice. Riding together, they decided to take a different route home. We just saw a woman with a hammer in her hand and she was tagging at the window. So we slowed down and we're like, wow, that's awkward. Probably locked her keys in her car. Kept driving for a second and we were like, wait, we should go back. That looks way too much that they're just trying to beat their window out. The lady came before we could even open the door. The lady came running and said she needed help and she said there's a baby stuck in the car. So He just took one swoop or hit with the hammer and it busted. And I got him out, got him in my sister's house. And amidst the melee, the two quietly went on their way but later decided to return. We went back to you know, make sure they were all right. They came back 30 minutes later to check on him because they, they knew about heat stroke and they were worried about the little guy. That's what they told us. Which leads back to this moment, a chance for the entire family to say thank you. Gall had wanted to add a monetary thank you. Simpson and Long declined. They had another suggestion. Uh, we just told her to come out and watch the Griffin game, man. <laughs> so of course, my family, my extended family, were all coming to the game. Teresa Gall admits she doesn't know anything about football, but she says she'll be a Griffin football fan for life. And by the looks of it, there may be a future football player in the family. Yeah, you like that? Any decent human being out there probably would have done the same thing. Every time I see them, I will say thank you. I, I can't imagine life without my grandson and what could have happened and that I'm eternally grateful to them. 
Simpson and Long are two of the captains on this Griffin football team. Meanwhile, Teresa, Liam, and the rest of the extended family made good on their promise and showed up for the game Thursday night. Unfortunately, the game's outcome did not provide a happy ending. With about 50 students, Winston High School is too small for football. Instead, each fall, the boys play softball. Fast pitch softball going back into the 50s. But this year, Winston was almost too small for that. Eventually, we found eight. Well, I was getting desperate enough. We were willing to play with less than nine, but we had to have nine to start. So enter senior Jacob Heldenbrand. I asked him once if, if he'd go out, you know, just stand there for one play, and he didn't really want to do it. Sports had not played much of a part in Jacob's life, not since he lost his right arm in a farming accident at age 11. I used to think about what I would do if I had two hands, like if I would have played sports more or whatever. But his school, his friends needed help, so Jacob stepped onto the diamond. Like I knew they needed someone and no one was going to do it, so I did it for them just so they'd have a team. He was really, I think, interested in helping his friends. I said I'd just stand out there for one play, which is what they wanted me to originally do. Just take the first pitch and step off the field. Mission rules require to start with nine and then you can have play with less. But instead of being a body, Jacob decided to become a player. I asked him when was the last time he had batted, and he said second grade. In the cages, he worked on a swinging one-armed bunt. It works. He's figured it out. Kind of got the goosebumps, you know. His batting average, 420. You know, I was hoping how, how special it would be if he could ever, if he could get one down and beat it out. And all of a sudden now I'm going from how special it would be if he could get on base to the kids are probably right now our second leading batting average. So he, it's a... It's a great year. This isn't a Cinderella year. Winston takes a 2-11 record to the 16-team state tournament, but they are taking a team. He really helped us have a team, and I'd say it's probably the heart of the team, really. I've learned I can kind of do more stuff and not, not like just immediately think I can't do it just because I have one arm. He's really done some great things for school morale this year. If you're not going to Newtown, you're not going to find it. In 1858, Newtown was a new town. We live 25 miles from four different county seats, an hour away from four different Walmarts. Nothing really new anymore about Newtown. Yeah, nothing has really changed. The 50-year-old fire engine still runs. The 92-year-old high school still stands. This grain elevator is Newtown's lifeblood, but high school basketball, it's heart. Wow, them little boys are just fantastic. <laughs> and its soul, 77-year-old Charlotte Busick. When I played, I played on a dirt field out in front of the building. Busick oh, played high school ball here in the early 50s. Her two sons played for the town's first Final Four bound team in 1977. That was a thrill. 32 years later, her three grandsons now start for the second Final Four squad in school history. And they're so fast. I don't remember the 77 team of being that fast. Welcome to Newtown Harris. Total high school enrollment 45, where the basketball is played in a barn on a rubber floor by a state-bound team that owns a 28-1 record. And I think they understand that this is a special time and, and they need to really enjoy it. Uh, I don't think it's quite sunk in yet. I don't think we understand how big of a deal it is really to, to the people that support us. I couldn't miss it for the world. It's the buzz in the town right now. The town will literally shut down for this trip to state. Are you going to shut down the business? you got to keep that going, though, right? Mm, probably not. No? No, we're, <laughs> we're probably closing down. Somebody said there better not be a fire in town because there won't be anybody there to fight it. You know, this has been something that we've, we've really visualized for a long time, and it's, uh, it's a dream come true, really, it is. No matter what happens in Columbia, life will go on here. The blood will still run, the heart will still beat, and the soul will still shine. <laughs> But just what if, after this weekend, Newtown becomes title Town? If we could bring a state title home, it would be awesome. It would mean uh, the world to everyone in this community. I might even faint, I don't know. But <laughs> you know, it would be something that would be talked about for the next, as long as these kids are alive.